But now it's time to talk about the budget. It's big news today. We are putting you in the hot seat and asking what would you do if you were Chancellor? Uh, today's topic is a big one. It's the two-child benefit cap. I want to know if you would scrap it if you were in control of the country's finances. It's the so-called sibling tax. It prevents parents from claiming child tax credit or universal credit for more than two children. And it is a uh, claimed, and it's claimed getting rid of that would help lift 250,000 kids out of poverty. However, removing it would cost the government an estimated £2.5 billion this year. So what would you do? 0207 862 is the number. Let us know. Couldn't do this whole part without that, uh, that little graphic there. James, what's your thoughts on this? Well... First of all, I think removing uh, the cap is a daft idea at this stage. Uh, would I like to see child benefit offered? Yes, I would. But I think it's one of those taxes where many parents don't need it. I think it's a sort of it costs more to administer to make sure it actually goes where it needs to go. And uh, and I think it's one of those debates that, frankly, kind of masks what really needs to be done in this budget. I'm horrified by um, the lack of financial knowledge in this country. I genuinely wish people had a better understanding of the tax system, what it does, what's required to encourage investment. We keep having the government talking and saying we want to grow the economy, which is exactly the same line that Liz Truss came up with, um, which I, I have to say she was misguided and so was Kwasi Kwarteng with what they did. We put so much uh, credibility into the Bank of England that he's yet to get a prediction right, so much credibility into the OBR who can't add up, so much credibility into the Office of National Security statistics or the people who make things up and, and a genuine misunderstanding there is nobody in the cabinet who has worked in a business and what you should do we've got billions of pounds being spent by government and government departments some of it worthy some of it not some of it misguided, taking away winter fuel allowances from those who genuinely need it. What the heck are they doing without having... They, they could put in generally simple measures. Ever since Gordon Brown became Chancellor... And, but hold and, on, and on that point, there are parents out there with more than two children yeah. who genuinely need the help. We're in a cost-of-living crisis and you can't always guarantee what's going to happen in the future. So you may have planned really well financially. One of you have got ill one of you's passed away. You can't always plan for the future. Shouldn't we be helping those people? You can't, but I think our benefit system, if you like, is so geared to not actually giving money to where it needs to be given. In, this, in the sense that, do I think that our um, system is uh, putting money in the right people's pockets? No, I don't. Do I think that we've got people who are unnecessarily having to go to food banks or suffer? Yes, we do. We, the whole thing is out of kilter and we have got nobody in the Chancellor. So if I was Chancellor, I would be saying, my number one task, Black hole or no black hole. Some of it is, you know, smoke and mirrors in my view. Okay. But I would be making sure that the money that we are raising is spent correctly. We are not. We are not making sure that and the that money is, that is required. I don't want to see anybody in this country suffer. And I don't care whether it's, um, you know, families or older people or younger people. There are a range of okay. people who desperately need our help. They're not getting it. And we're not doing the right things to encourage businesses to invest. And we're just playing politics at the moment. OK, well, that's what James <laughs> would do if he was Chancellor. But what would you do? We're going to find out what Yasmin thinks right after this break. But do give us a first though. It's time to hear what you would do if you were Chancellor. Today's topic is a big one. It's the two-child benefit cap. I want to know if you would scrap it if you were in control of the country's finances. 0207 862 Yasmin, we've already heard what James has to say on the matter. What's your view? Well, he was just applying for a job at number 10. He, he knows feel that everything, way. everything that nobody else knows. I hope you get the job, Thanks. Uh, James. Well, I don't um, have much competition, do I? <laughs> not from me. Um, but I, I completely would rid, uh, get rid of it because um, uh, the Child Poverty Action Group says 250,000, but actually more children are living in poverty. And here are two arguments to think about. One... It was designed by George Osborne and his gang, presumably to stop people having extra children. We've just heard this week a huge panic about the low birth weight in this country. Right, yeah. So where's the joined up thinking here? We should not just be giving the third child benefit but I back. I suppose the question is, does the government want to encourage people on a universal credit or or um, 
child benefit to, or there's another one, sorry, universal credit or something else, to have more children? Is so are that we saying? The... Are we saying that we are that kind of country, kind mm -hmm. of almost eugenics, mm -hmm. that we want middle class children, but not working class children, many of whom could be brilliant, could be extremely important for many sectors. I mean, honestly, is that, I think, is that I think what there is an argument, there? though. I think there is an argument, and I, and I hear what you say, and I don't think anybody wants to see a child who, who is born into a, a family that maybe the situation's changed. And I think that was a great point that you made earlier, where the situation can change, and therefore you, you don't want to see that. But I do think that we have to have more responsibility as individuals, as adults, as to what we do and what we can afford and what we pay for, combined with the fact that we've also got a system that's now taking so much in tax, it's at a 70-year high, I dare say Rachel Reeves is about to make it even higher, where what we're really doing is we're then shoveling more money into the system and then shoveling it out again. I would much rather see more money left with people, left with parents, so that they genuinely can look after their lives and themselves without being interfered by the state and then having to take handouts. You're talking okay. middle class talk here again, James, put Fine. yourself put yourself into the head of somebody who is actually working, cleaning, doing three, and I know people like this, doing three cleaning what, jobs. I don't? Three cleaning jobs, listen, and they can't make ends meet, and then she finds she's pregnant. So are we saying go have an abortion, which also, you know, is something that's quite hard to do? Or are we saying you've let us down because, look, we're going to have to pay for it? Where is this idea of mutuality? The principles of the welfare state, okay. which said, we are one, we may be different, but we look after each other. Okay, I want to go to the call. Zoe from Swansea, you're up first. What's your view on the two child cap? Oh, hello everybody, very interesting topic. Um, I do agree with actually scrapping it. Um, there is child poverty, number one, but as the lady, I've forgotten her name, yeah, pointed right. out, the birth rate has dropped quite a lot and is dropping. Um, and if we want to have um, younger people coming in at the other end to look after us oldies, we're going to be a bit stuffed, basically. So I think it's a bit of a dual-edged sword, really. Yeah. Um, poverty in children and with parents, they really do need support. And as you pointed out, what happens if another uh, pregnancy happens along the way? It can put huge pressure on the families. And the birth rate is dropping for whatever reasons, and it but, needs to but be that's suggesting, into. Zoe, that's suggesting that actually the the benefits will encourage people to have children, and is that I what know, we want I know. to happen? Yeah. It is a difficult one. We do want to encourage people to have more children mm. um, due to the birth rate, but also not put the children and the parents in poverty. Yeah. We're in a, you know, a crisis at the moment. Everybody is. Mm. And it, it just seems to be so unfair that the, the poorest families just get the least. And they, it, they're it, the ones that really do need supporting. Children and particularly... Children, yeah, sorry, as anyone else. Zoe, uh, uh, children particularly at the moment are um, are, are some of the worst off. At, you know, a high percentage, twenty five percent, living in poverty. Might actually be higher than that in some places. Zoe, thank you very much for your call. What a great call. caller! What a great caller! Thank you, Zoe. Uh, Joanne from Liverpool, uh, what's your view on this? Um, well, God rest my younger son. He died four years ago. Uh, but I only had two boys for the one simple reason is I was fearful of not being able to, you know, maybe buy them shoes or buy the clothes. I did work and my husband worked at mm. the time. You know what I mean? Uh, so that was my choice. And I mean, I, yeah, I can make your own choice. I understand that. But I mean, my choice was that I couldn't afford to have any more children. Simple as that. I completely understand that, Joan, and I, I think everybody would be in agreement that, you know, you, you try and make as best decisions you can on what you can afford. But let's say you've got a, a couple and they, they have two children, they decide to have a third because financially they're pretty well off and, and they have no financial concerns. And then illness strikes and maybe the main breadwinner passes away and now you've got a single parent with three children really struggling to get by. Shouldn't we offer them help? Uh, well, maybe in different circumstances. Maybe they should look into things like that. You know what I mean? Which I do understand. But I mean, I know that my choice, uh, which was 1970, I'd asked you, um, I knew that, well, I was working and I went right back to work. My husband was working. But I thought at the time, oh my God, I don't want any more kids. Well, I might be able to keep to the standard what I hope to keep them at. Simple as that. 
I, I appreciate I appreciate that and I'm really sorry for your loss. I should just also mention that many, many people on Universal Credit are actually working um, as well as claiming those benefits. Thank you very much for your call. Bianca from Kent, the two-child benefit cap, do we need to scrap it? Um, no, I don't think it needs to be scrapped. I just need it. I think it needs to just be reformed. Um, I think you made a good point. You make a good point, Storm, on the fact that if someone dies or if someone gets ill, people um, can get made redundant. Mm. There's things that happen, obviously. And I think those people, we should always help. On the flip side of that, I do know a girl, a young girl, she's only in her 20s, she's on her sixth child, um, living in a two-bedroom flat, um, but her um, six-year-old little girl goes and has her nails done, which costs thirty pound, and they all walk round. They have got so much. She's got so much money because yeah. they all squash yeah, into this flat. Well, I, I <laughs> do, that, it does sound, let's say, unusual. Um, but we hear these stories all the time that you know they've got a neighbour that's doing this, or you know somebody down the street that's doing that, or there's a council estate down the road and they're all living this lavish lifestyle. I, I, I can't answer to any of that because we don't know their specific circumstances. We don't know where that money's coming from uh, and something might be coming down the line for them. I, 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 so I can't comment on that, but I appreciate that might be quite hard to, to take, particularly if you are working very hard just to provide for two children when you would have wanted three, but you've held back as our earlier caller, caller had. Bianca, thank you very much for your call. We are going to have to move on because we're running out of time. This show's gone so fast. Uh, now